Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. I'm glad you joined us today as we continue a fascinating series of studies on the book of Proverbs, practical wisdom that can bless your life and through you bless the lives of those around you. Our topic today, divine wisdom, but we're not just talking about some kind of intellectual idea. We're talking about practical instruction from God that can bless your life. So we're glad you're with us. And I want to welcome our team. Good to be together again, isn't it? Yes. And it's been an exciting journey. I, I think it's the first time I've really studied the Proverbs in depth, and I'm finding it to be really practical. We hope you're being blessed too. We'd love to hear from you. You can write to us at sshope at hopetv.org. And by the way, if you've missed any of the programs in this series on the Proverbs, you can go to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess. And there you can watch past programs. You can even download the outline that we use in our class. You can download the song too, the sheet music. There's just a lot of resources there. And by the way, if you're a Facebook fan, go to our Facebook page. It's growing in numbers of likes every day. We smile every time you click like because we're happy you're part of our community. So uh, lots of ways to connect with us. And here's a few emails, and we always enjoy receiving these. Shelly Ann writes, from the beautiful twin islands of Trinidad and Tobago. Anybody here from Trinidad and Tobago? No? Okay. My name's Shelly Ann. My twin sister introduced me to Hope Sabbath School. Go twin sister, right? <laughs> she said, indeed, I have been blessed. I have been introducing Hope Sabbath School to other people. Amen. Yeah. It's awesome. I'm also better able to understand my Bible. And I'm not just surface reading anymore. This is awesome. It is. Your team members really encourage me. I've gained so much more knowledge about God's Word. Thank you. May God continue to bless Hope Sabbath School. Well, thank you for writing, Shelley Ann, from the beautiful twin islands of Trinidad and Tobago. We're glad you're part of Hope Sabbath School. Here's a note from uh, Mifuna. Mifuna lives in Brooklyn, New York, and says, I'm writing to thank you all for helping me study God's Word away from home. Ah, I wonder where home is for him. I'm a freshman currently attending university. Hope Sabbath School inspired me to be salt and light of the earth for our Heavenly Father and create a Bible study group on my campus. Amen. Amen. Is that awesome? I pray that you'll keep me in your prayers, uh, Mifuna. Well, Mifuna, that's awesome yeah. that you're, you're starting a Bible study group on the university campus. And uh, why don't you keep in touch with us? Let us know what God's doing. And you can tell your friends about we've got that Hope Sabbath School app. They can put it on their iPhone, iPad, and click on it, get the latest program. Follow us on Facebook. We're just glad that you're part of Hope Sabbath School there in Brooklyn, New York. Here's a note, a very honest note from Yvonne in Namibia. Where's Namibia? Anybody know? Africa. That's right. It's West Africa. Former German West Africa, right down just north of South Africa. And Yvonne writes and says, very honest, I once never liked Bible studies, but through Hope Sabbath School, I was humbled. <laughs> Keep up the good work for the Lord. Be blessed, Yvonne. Amen. Well, I don't know what it means that you were humbled. I guess it means that you realize you needed to study the Bible, Yvonne, and we're glad. And Bible shouldn't be boring, should it? No. No. And one of the ways, those of you who are teachers, one of the ways the Bible can become more interesting in a study is to make it interactive. interactive. That's right. right. And we're going to do that in the study today. And we're going to learn some amazing things and hear some amazing testimonies. So we're just glad you joined us. One last note from Sifa in South Africa. Sifa says, I'd like to greet you all in the wonderful name of our soon coming King Jesus. Amen. 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 I like that. My name's Sifa. I'm a university student. So it happened two weeks back. It was heavily raining and windy. I could not go to church because we were worshiping at our mother church and it's a few kilometers away. Praise the Lord. I had my own church service in my room, went straight online, and enjoyed Hope Sabbath School. Amen. 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 
That's great. What can I say? God is good. Thank you very much. May God continue using you. I love you, Sifa. Amen. Well, someone will have to Google Sifa, S-I-P-H-A, and tell me if Sifa is a man's name or a, a, a lady's name. I'm, I don't know. I'm going to now get hundreds of emails from South Africa, sshope at hopetv.org, saying, didn't you know Sifa is a... And you'll give me that information. But, you know, it really is wonderful to hear from our Hope Sabbath School family, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. And if if it you is. haven't written to us yet, write to us. In fact, if you've written before, write again. Tell us what God's doing. SSHope, hopetv.org. And we not only share that with our participants team, but with our media team too, even with the people that uh, uh, get the makeup ready so we don't look too shiny. And the people that cook the lunch for us when we're here filming all day. Because we're all part of this mission together, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. just awesome. Yeah. You're part of it, too. And we want to just thank you for being part of Hope Sabbath School. Right now, we're going to sing our theme song for this series on the Proverbs. It's called Listen to Counsel. It's taken from Proverbs 19 and verse 20 and three other Proverbs. Let's sing it together. Listen to counsel, receive instruction, that you may be wise, you may be wise in your latter days. Listen to counsel, receive instruction, that you may be wise, that you may be wise in your latter days. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. But listen to counsel, receive instruction, that you may be wise, that you may be wise in your latter day. Listen to counsel, receive instruction, that you may be wise, you may be wise in your latter days. A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Listen to counsel, receive instruction, that you may be wise, you may be wise in your latter days. Listen to counsel, receive instruction, that you may be wise, you may be wise in your latter days. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. Listen to counsel, receive instruction, that you may be wise. You may be wise in your latter day. Listen to counsel, receive instruction, that you may be wise, you may be wise in your latter days. You may be wise in your latter days. You know, we just got an email from a, a lady in her late teens, and she said, my mother was giving me some counsel, and I didn't want to listen to her. And then I thought, listen to counsel, receive instruction. And, you know, if that parent is guiding you in the way of the Lord, you ought to listen to that counsel, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yes. You ought to respect your parent, unless they're contradicting the Word of God. You ought to listen to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I hope that song will come back to some of us when we're saying, well, I think I'd like to do that. We'll get, listen to counsel, mm -hmm. and it will help direct our path. We're talking about divine wisdom today. And... God wants to give us wisdom because he loves us, doesn't he? Yes. Yes. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you that you want us to take the path that leads to life 
Yes, the path that leads to you. And I pray that you would give us the wisdom that we study about today, divine wisdom, not only to bless our lives, but to bless others through us. May your Holy Spirit be with us in our discussion with Hope Sabbath School members around the world. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Book of Proverbs, we're in chapter 8 as we continue our study. Proverbs chapter 8, and we're going to begin by reading the first three verses. And here again, wisdom is crying out. Mm -hmm. And Stephanie, would you start our study today? Sure. Proverbs 8, the first three verses. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places, by the way in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the gate, at the doors. I want you to go, keep your place in Proverbs 8. We're coming back there, but go to John chapter 8 because we find a Jesus crying out. It kind of reminds you of wisdom. Jennifer, do you have that in John 8, uh, verses 37 and 38? It's at the Feast of Tabernacles, and on the last day, the great day of the feast, let's, let's hear how John records the story. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. Hmm. I speak what I have seen with my father, and you do not know what you have seen with your father. You know, I just realized something that I should have said John chapter 7. So John that was a great seven. verse, okay. and you read it accurately. But actually, I need John 7, uh, I think. Is that the one on the last day, the great right. day of the That's feast? Right. Yeah. 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 All right, John chapter 7. Verses 37 and 38, I think we've got time to find that because Jesus is on the, the day of, uh, last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. Here we find similar language to Proverbs. Thanks for reading that for us. On the, on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Mm -hmm. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So what do you get out of those two verses? Here's wisdom, which is kind of a personification as a, a woman crying out. And, and Jesus now, he cries out in a loud voice. He's, he's, he is the wisdom of God, right? He's trying to, wh what do you get out of those two uh, pictures? Anybody? Andrea, what do you, what do you see there? Um, it, it seems like it's not something that we automatically look for. And so it has to be shouted at us. Okay, yeah. so, so we could miss it. Yeah. All right, anybody else? Jennifer? I would say there are competing messages. So there is wisdom crying out, and then there's foolishness crying out. Okay. And Adrian? Kind of like what, what she, Jennifer said, is that it's like they're showing the importance. He's crying with a loud voice. Using someone screaming or they're yelling, it's something that is important to you. Yeah, but I like that idea that there are other people shouting too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. And like, like uh, Andrea said, it may not be easy for us to hear it with all of those competing mm -hmm. messages. And, and so wisdom's crying out. Jesus is crying out mm -hmm. because Jesus is the wisdom of God. He's saying, please. Mm -hmm. But it's not an angry crying out, is it? No. It's a crying out in love, yeah. saying, please listen to the wisdom. Um, let me ask you a question. Why do you think so few people listen to the wisdom that God wants to give? Why, why is that, Trish Lee? It's not popular. Okay. So uh, it, it's countercultural, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It might not be what we want to hear. Yes. Mm. Okay. So it's, uh, it's an unpopular. Well, more so, if Jesus were to say something, or wisdom in general from the Bible were to say something that we think is comfortable for our life yeah. and our lifestyles, mm. then that's something we want to hear. But if it's something that goes against the life that we want to live, then we may try to reject this wisdom. Is it possible, and I'll come to you, Pua, Pua, is it possible that we don't even, that people just don't even recognize that it's from God? I yeah, mean, that yeah. they don't yeah, recognize it. It's just one other message. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so so how, do, how do we help people to recognize that that message is actually uh, divine wisdom? Think about that, uh, Puya. Uh, and also the fact that we were born into sin, uh, mm -hmm. our natural tendencies is to incline towards sin and go against God. 
unless we receive Jesus as our personal savior. So many people refuse to listen because it's our natural tendency. Uh, as we talked about in a previous study, the enemy knows how to hook us, right? Yeah. He, he knows what will catch us, and so that's what he calls out. Gloria? And I think sometimes it's difficult for us to heed wisdom because we haven't gotten to a point that we feel like we need wisdom. Mm -hmm. We're just living lives, waiting for something to happen before we seek wisdom. Okay, so we don't even yeah. sense our need. But, right. but let me come back to that question. There's so many voices, Gary. You want to respond to that one? How, how, how can I recognize which one of those is the wisdom of God? Well, I mean, for other people to recognize, I mean, hopefully in our lives, by the grace of God, we, those who recognize it as God, live it through their lives, and others see that. They're like, wow, how did they overcome that? Or how are they able to go through that situation? So they see some kind of a tangible yeah. witness, evidence an evidence him. for them? Yeah. Yeah? Jennifer? I think Jesus is looking for his followers. I mean, he's putting a message out there, but he's the author and finisher of our faith. So I think in everyone, there is this place that will, you know, go towards the bat, but there's also this place that wants to be responsive to Jesus. And so I think it's Jesus putting that wisdom out there, but then also seeking after us. And the Holy Spirit convicts people of the truth in God's Word. Yeah, well, thank you for bringing the Holy Spirit and conviction in. Is it too dangerous for us to say to a person, pray, just pray that the Holy Spirit will direct you to that wisdom which comes from God? Can we trust that? Or is that too dangerous to just say, just pray? What do you think? I think that's a part of it. I okay. Think, I think because, you know, we're told spiritual things are spiritually discerned, so we need the Holy Spirit to help us. But I also think that when you have different messages being presented to you, you have to compare it back to God's Word. So yes. in Isaiah, we yeah. know that if they don't speak according to yes. this Word, there's no light in them. Mm -hmm. And so that helps you to realize that if they're saying something that's different than what God's already said in His Word and contradictory, then that's a red flag that this might not be divine wisdom. It could just be the wisdom of man or tradition. So I guess then we have to trust that as that person is praying, say, God, I don't, there's so many voices out there. I don't really know where, where your wisdom is that God may use one of us to, yes. to help bring them some wisdom from God. Right. But then ultimately, it is a miracle of God that brings conviction to their heart, Absolutely. right? Yeah, sure. We're going to read some of that wisdom today, Proverbs chapter 8 still, verses 4 through 21 uh, talks about some of this divine wisdom and... Uh, Jennifer, would you be willing to read that starting in verse 4 of Proverbs chapter 8, uh, Wisdom's Message? And I'm reading from the New King James Version. To you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O you simple ones, understand prudence, and you fools, be of an understanding heart. Listen, for I will speak of excellent things. And from the opening of my lips will come right things. For my mouth will speak truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are with righteousness. Nothing crooked or perverse is in them. They are all plain to him who understands and right to those who find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things one may desire cannot be compared with her. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and I find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding, I have strength. By me, kings reign and rulers decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, all the judges of the earth. I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and honor are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may fill their treasuries. 
So what's the message you hear from wisdom? What, what impacted you from what you just heard? Will Find you? me. Find me, okay. Mm -hmm. what, what else? Yes, Kenneth? Wisdom is attractive more than even material possession. Yes. Okay, the, the, the wisdom is the most valuable treasure, all right? Mm -hmm. Anybody else? What, what impacted you? What were you hearing? It, it leads to righteousness. Okay, it leads to righteousness. Mm -hmm. I mean, Gary? It, it clearly defines what the fear of the Lord is. We hear that phrase a lot in the Bible, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, and people think that, how, how am I supposed to fear God if he's so loving? Well, the fear of the Lord isn't that to be afraid of God, it's to hate evil and pride. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of yeah. wisdom. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so it's this respect for God, which not only turns me away from evil, but turns me to Him, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So, so w wisdom is saying, basically, find me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's personified yeah. here. Find me. Yeah. I am more valuable to you than material yeah. things. Why is that true? Yeah? Because they fade and pass away. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Have you ever heard of people who win vast amounts of money, like in a lottery, and they're bankrupt like yeah. a year later? Yeah. Why? Because they didn't have any wisdom. They just had some extra money, but they didn't know what to do with it, right? But what I like here is that wisdom's also offering a reward. And that verse 21, uh, wisdom says that I cause those who love me to inherit wealth. It's mm. a different wealth than what the world is offering. Mm. And this is a wealth that lasts forever, what God wants us to And have. isn't it interesting when we began our study on the Proverbs that mm -hmm. Solomon, he didn't ask for long life, remember, or riches. Yes. He asked for wisdom, wisdom yeah. right, for a hearing heart. Yeah. And what did the Lord say to him? He gave yeah, him I'll everything give you wisdom, else in addition. But I'm also going to give you yeah. riches and wealth. Mm -hmm. So when we don't just focus on, I want money, mm. you know, God will bless us with other things yes. when we decide what's most valuable, right? Yeah. Exactly. This wisdom is not new. Let's look, continuing on in verses 22 and following. This wisdom is actually from the beginning because it is indeed a wisdom that comes from God. Joshua, would you read for us, continuing on verses 22 through 31? Sure, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. The Bible says, The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I have been established from everlasting, from the beginning, before there was ever an earth. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth or the fields or the primal dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters could not transgress his command. When he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him as a master craftsman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and my delight was with the sons of men. Now, that's kind of an interesting word picture, and the reason that wisdom could be there even at the very beginning is because wisdom God. comes from God, right? Look yes. at another text to keep your place in Proverbs, but look in uh, Psalm 90. This is one of the Psalms that was not written by David, and it actually tells us who the author is. Psalm 90. Who, who wrote Psalm 90, anyone? Moses. Moses did, that's right. And uh, uh, who will read that for us? Verses 1 and 2, Stephanie? Sure. I'll be reading from the King James Version. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Now here's something really amazing for those who are followers of Jesus. If you go to the Gospel of John chapter 1, we'll dis discover that the Son of God who came into human flesh as Jesus of Nazareth mm -hmm. was actually the creator of the world. Did you know that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. John chapter 1, startling revelation. John chapter 1, Trisha Lee, you have that? Yes. Let's look at verses 1 through 3 and verse 14, and uh, we'll see that then confirmed in Colossians 1, 15 through 17. I have the New King James Version. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was within the beginning with God. 
all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. Verse 14, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Hmm. And he who became flesh and dwelt among us, his name was? Jesus. Jesus. His name was Jesus. And one who'd been a fierce enemy of Jesus, Saul of Tarsus, became so convinced that Jesus was more than a, a false teacher, but actually was actually the Messiah, the true sent of God, that he gave this testimony in Colossians 1, 15 through 17, writing to, to believers in Colossae. Colossians 1, 15 through 17. And the reason that we need to see that wisdom was there from the beginning is because we will find wisdom to live as we study the life and the teachings of Jesus. Uh, Timothel, do you have uh, verses 15 through 17 of Colossians 1? Yes, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Mm. And so the testimony in the Proverbs that wisdom was at the beginning, yes. that wisdom was actually in the person, in the person of the Son of God who came into humanity. Now, how does that affect the way I come and read the Gospel record? If I believe the wisdom of God is really embodied in the person of Jesus. Mm. It, it would affect the way I'd read mm. his teachings, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, the way he interacted with people. Yes, and, the, and, and the, the ultimate goal of our search for wisdom will be to find Jesus, mm. to get to know Jesus personally. Mm. And that's back to that, do I take the, the way of evil, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or the way to God, to God right? right? And God is most completely revealed in the person of his son Jesus, who would say, if you've seen me, you've seen, you've seen, the, you've seen the Father. Father. Yeah. You want to know what, what the Father is like. Yes. So, so we want to remember, while we're studying Proverbs that are almost 3,000 years old, we do that in the context of Jesus, who is the wisdom of God. Let's keep reading in Proverbs 8, verses 32 to 36, because here wisdom tells us that we will be blessed when we listen. Gloria, would you read that for us? Proverbs 8, beginning with verse 32. Sure, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Now therefore, listen to me, my children, for blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instructions and be wise, and do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, that's pretty strong, isn't it? Yep. Yes. But I like that. Whoever finds me finds life right. and obtains favor from the Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because wow. God's wanting to bless us, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. He, he's, he's wanting to give us the wisdom to know how to live. You know, I, I want us to take the second half of our study to do kind of a computer search, all right? Wisdom. <laughs> and I, wanna, I want us to think about some stories. The reason it's good to read your Bible is because those stories can instruct us. Mm -hmm. I want us to think about some stories in the Bible of people who sought wisdom from God, mm -hmm. followed that wisdom, and they were blessed. Mm -hmm. That's really what we're talking about in our study today. Seeking divine wisdom following it, yeah. and blessings will come to us. So uh, there's no right or wrong answer. Who'd like to start, Trisha Lee? I just have to think about the, the, the story where Abraham uh, asked his servant to find a wife for his son. It was an important decision that impacted the lineage um, of Christ, and they didn't want to find someone from anywhere. And there Eliezer goes out, and he prays and asks that, you know, he would be shown who this, this, this chosen woman would be. 
And in the wisdom, the Lord showed him that through her acts of kindness, it was going to be Rebecca. And so I think that there's wisdom in life decisions like finding a partner and, and, and finding a spouse, but it just doesn't impact you in companionship. It also impacts your life, I guess, legacy and the children that come from you. But I thought there was wisdom there that even this servant was able to ask God to show who that um, companion should be for, uh, for Isaac. So I, I think about that when I think about wisdom and thinking about wanting to, to choose right for myself and, 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 and that kind of thing. What a, what a great illustration. By the way, Abraham is a super famous person, right? Yeah. Yeah. But Eliezer, you mm -hmm. know, his servant, he, he seeks wisdom from God. He acts yeah. upon that wisdom. Mm -hmm. and, and when Isaac meets Rebecca, what is it? it says he wept like... Mm -hmm. This is, a, this is a happy day, right? <laughs> this is a happy day. So uh, thanks for that great illustration. That's in the book of Genesis, yeah. if someone wants to read that story. Uh, hear wisdom, act upon it, and blessings come. blessings come. Yes, Jennifer. I would just say the story of Mary Magdalene, because she sits at Jesus' feet, and she learns from him. And based on that relationship, she spends all of this money buying this perfume to anoint his feet for his burial at a time when his disciples don't even want to acknowledge the fact that he has to be crucified. Mm. And so, you know, he says, you have chosen the better thing, and throughout history, everyone will remember what you did. Mm. So I think she chose wisdom. Yeah, she, that, that's very interesting because, because how did she know? Well, you say she was listening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but she listened to the right message, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she acted upon it, and... Uh, and both, back, we talked about this, not only was Mary blessed, but Jesus was blessed yeah. too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when we hear the wisdom from God and act upon it, yeah. we're not the only ones blessed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Eric, you had a, a story. I actually had two, but I'll... Two? Oh, I'll stay. I have to choose one. <laughs> Your I'll, favorite. I'll stick with one. Uh, da young David, um, uh, with the story of uh, David and Goliath, um, when, you know, people are discouraging him. You're such a little, you know, man, and... This is a giant. How are you going to, you know, kill him? How are you going to win against him? And he didn't listen to them and listen to the, you know, the voice of God that was shouting in his, in his head. And he went ahead and did what, you know, what he was used to doing with lions, and, and he succeeded. Yeah, and it was interesting. Thank you for, you know, the wisdom from God is, uh, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, right? Mm -hmm. That's wisdom from yeah. God. Because he doesn't say, I come because I can hit bears and lions. <laughs> you know, he, he's really going beyond himself there, right? right. Mm -hmm. uh, and he says, I come in the name of the Lord of hosts. And, and, and again, as the story with Jennifer, David is not the only one blessed that day, right? No. Yeah. The whole nation is blessed mm -hmm. because he's willing to receive wisdom from God and, and act upon it. And I wish I knew what the second one was, but I don't have time to ask you just yet. Because Puya has his hand raised, and so does Kenneth. What's that? Uh, Daniel. Yes. All right, let's talk about Daniel. There are many stories. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a whole book of Daniel, yeah. isn't there, in the, in the Hebrew Scriptures. Which story jumps out for you as one where Daniel receives wisdom from God, acts upon it, and blessings result? And the story from Daniel chapter 2, where uh, King Nebuchadnezzar he forgot his dream and commanded all the wise men in the whole country to tell him his dream. No one could, and he, he decreed that every wise man will be killed. And it was like, no more chance for everyone else. Okay. And, then and by the way, Daniel and his three friends were kind of on the lower level of the wise man group, so they were going to be killed too, right? Yeah, yeah. they were going to be killed. So he prayed to God with his friends, and God gave him the dream that the king had. And not only was him safe, but all the wise men and the, the king actually learned about God. So yeah. You know, a lot of people know Daniel chapter 2 uh, because of the story of the, of the dream. But there's a prayer of Daniel there, isn't there? Mm -hmm. uh, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. I, I, my wife wrote a scripture song, so that's how I memorized it. Huh? But it said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might yes. are His. Mm -hmm. That's moving away from self-dependence, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And then it says He changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. Mm -hmm. yes. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. Yes. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness, and light dwells with Him. And I love the end of the prayer. It says, I thank you and praise you, 
O God of my fathers, because he said he prayed, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. You have given me wisdom and might. Now, he started his prayer by saying, who has all the wisdom? God. 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 Who has all the might? God. God. But he ends his prayer by saying, I want to praise you that you've done what? Yeah. Given it to you've me. given it to me. And, and again, as in this earlier story, who's blessed as a result of him seeking that wisdom from God and acting upon it? All the wise that are scared. Yes. Hey, even even those yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The other wise Chaldeans and wise yeah. men who yeah. are just a bunch of uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting thought. Does God love them too? Yeah. Does yes. He want to save them too? He's yes. going to use people who receive divine wisdom. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you for that story. There's a lot more. Mm -hmm. Kenneth, you had your hand raised. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about Jonathan and David. Okay, Jonathan and David. and David. Jonathan knew that God had anointed David as the king. Yes. But in the worldly sense, it was Jonathan who was next to become the king. But for him to understand the wisdom of God in choosing David and mm -hmm. also giving in and being faithful to yes. um, David, mm -hmm. that is also heavenly wisdom to know that being a king over the people of God is God's appointed. Not and wasn't there a story with the, his, with his uh, archer shooting the arrow? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That he warned David mm -hmm. that, uh, that, that, that Jonathan's own father was, was wanting to kill him. That's a powerful story, Kenneth. Thank you for sharing that because, because that shows Jonathan surrendering even his future, right? Mm -hmm. To the will of God and saying, God, you have wisdom beyond me. And if, if you know that David should be king, uh, it's kind of like Jesus prayed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your will, you know, not my will, right? right? Thank you for sharing that one. Someone else, a story, uh, Andrew, that jumps out. Someone was attentive to divine wisdom, acted upon it, and blessings came. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite Bible stories is in Second Chronicles 20, and it's a king of Israel, um, Jehoshaphat. And there's a, a bunch of armies, like lots and lots of people coming against him. And he just stops and he's like, God, I can't do it. Like this is, he has this long prayer about like, this is too much for us. We need your help. And um, then they assemble the whole, you know, all the tribes come together. And then a prophet of God stands up and says, you're going to be okay tomorrow. Just go out and God's going to take care of it. And he, and he did. I mean, he obeyed. They went out and sang, I think, in front. Didn't they lead the choirs first? Yeah, the first? choir went yep. first. Mm -hmm. and, I meant to the yes, choir yeah. Okay, let's pray. <laughs> <laughs> pray and sing at the same time. Yeah. Isn't that the story where he says, uh, we don't know what to do, but our yeah, eyes are upon you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what's that a way of saying? We need wisdom. Wisdom. divine yeah. wisdom, yeah. right? Yeah. And how does the story end? Yeah, they, they walk out there, and I think all of the armies are completely annihilated. They didn't have to do anything. Yeah. God goes before them Amen. in an amazing way when we seek divine wisdom. That's in Second Chronicles 20. chapter 20, if anyone would like to read that. You know, the scriptures, the Bible says that these stories are given for our admonition for our kind of training, right? Mm -hmm. yes. You think of another story that, that uh, if not, we'll come back to Eric's second story that he liked. <laughs> but uh, um, Gloria and then and Gary, a story that jumps out at you saying... Yeah, I was thinking about Joseph the carpenter, Jesus' father. Epic Joseph father. the carpenter, you know, he doesn't get a lot of press, does he? <laughs> uh, where, where do you see him uh, receiving wisdom from God and acting upon it? So in Matthew, we find that he finds out that um, Mary is pregnant, but he is not the father of the baby, but the Holy, Spirit, um, the Holy Spirit talks to him, and an angel comes to talk to him not to put Mary away because he was thinking of that. And according to the earthly standard, like worldly standards, he was right to put her away because that was mm. not something that shouldn't be done. But he listened to God and listened to godly wisdom, and he kept her, and now he was... He was the father of Jesus. So. Yeah, I mean, he, he got to be blessed, blessed to yeah. be the earthly guardian of the Savior, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he had walked away, uh, what would have happened? You ever unpack that story? Would what would have happened if he'd walked know. away? Would God have provided someone else to, to provide for Mary? Yeah. And he would have. He would have. He would have. Yeah, but he would have missed the blessing of being he'd a He'd the blessing. Huge blessing. Yeah. Wow. But, you know, that's another great illustration, Gloria, where... Human wisdom says, you know, I've not been sexually involved with my betrothed. We're not married yet, so I know I'm not the parent, right? Mm. And this has never happened before. So when, when my betrothed says it was the Holy Spirit, that really challenges human logic, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yet there will come this supernatural revelation 
that God is at work, right? It's, it's a beautiful story of trusting divine wisdom and acting upon it, and, uh, and blessings come. Thanks for sharing that one. Gary. Uh, Gideon and the Midianites. Mm -hmm. I mean... That's in the he, book of uh, Judges, a story of, yeah, uh, about, about Gideon. And uh, tell us the story. So, yeah, in Judges 6 to, I believe, 8. But um, essentially, Gideon, he is part of the smallest clan or small, smallest tribe. And um, God says, hey, I want you to deliver our, my people. And he comes up with excuses and tests, like, God, is it really me? Is it really me? And he finally accepts the call from God. And um, he gathers a, a, a large army, not larger than the Midianites, but substantially. 32,000, yeah, I think, 32, right? Yeah, 32,000. That's a pretty good army. Yeah. yeah. Outnumbered and, four to one, but <laughs> yeah, 120,000 Midianites. And, and then God tells him, that's too many people. <laughs> Go and uh, I have a test for them. And it, it's down to like 300 now. Well, the first one is anybody who wants to go home, and they almost all go home, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they're down to what, 10,000? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, and he said, yeah. now go take the drinks of water. Yeah, and those that like lap up the water, send them home. Those that pick it up, keep them. You know, and, I imagine, I don't yeah. imagine the story, but uh, I, I imagine Gideon saying to them, go and get a drink of water. <laughs> hint, hint. You, you know? Yeah. And what happens? Well, uh, Gideon and his band um, defeat the Midianites, but God gives them the battle plan. This is what I want you to do. And it's not even, I need you to train them. I just need you to get some pots, put some torches, blow some horns, and just surround them and run down. And I'll take care of the rest. But, I mean, just talk about insurmountable odds and mm -hmm mind-boggling ways God can overcome those odds. Amen. It's got to be the wisdom of God, you know, yeah. because yes. yeah. you can only hit so many people with a trumpet, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not going to work very well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but God says, no, you're not actually going to have to fight at all. He brings confusion to the camp, right, right. Mm -hmm. of the enemies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sword. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that Gideon didn't walk away from that thinking to himself, I'm really smart. <laughs> right. right, exactly. Yeah. Wisdom of God. Yeah, the wisdom I mean, of God. The, so, the people of Israel try to make him king, and he refuses and says, hey, God is our king. Mm -hmm. He is our ruler. Mm -hmm. We need to follow him. So the wisdom of God mm -hmm. is, so, is, uh, is foolishness to, to men sometimes. We go, that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. But actually, uh, it is the power of God unto yeah. salvation. Amen. But time for a couple of other stories. You have one, Adrian, that jumps yeah. out. You say, wow, this is an example of listening to divine wisdom, acting upon it, and, and blessings come. I think for me it's Moses. Okay. The time when they were gonna, they, they saw the Red Sea and they didn't know how they were going to cross <laughs> it. Everyone was around was going crazy, but Moses, you know, he looked to God for that wisdom, and God said, this is what you do, just put your Stretch staff out your up. hand. <laughs> and then he saved himself and also the whole Israel. Mm. And you know, Moses was a very educated man, right? Mm -hmm. He was trained in all of the logic of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Was there anywhere in his training that told him you could hold a rod over a, <laughs> of a sea and it would part? No. 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 No, that's, that's wisdom from above, mm -hmm. uh, and yet he does it, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and blessings come? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Blessings come in that great story. The Bible is filled with amazing stories of, um, of people who say, you know, I'm not that smart. Mm -hmm. I need wisdom from God. Mm -hmm. But wisdom is more than knowledge, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wisdom yeah. is taking that truth yes. and that's acting right. upon it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And then when the blessings come, you praise God. We praise God. God. Absolutely. We say, this yeah. wasn't me. Uh, this was God. Now, Amen. I'm going to hyperspace forward. You can go back to the Bible store if you want. But I want to ask you if there's someone in your life who has inspired you as a person who listens attentively to God's wisdom and acts upon it. And then I'm going to give you a chance for a personal testimony. But as you think back over your life, and this is not to, uh, like, flatter people. Okay, but just to recognize, as I look back over my life, there's someone that comes to my mind that had the courage to listen to God's w wisdom and act upon it, and blessings came. Is anybody? Is there someone that comes to your mind? Uh, someone in your in your life journey? Trisha Lee. Yeah, you know, I think about my uh, my father and my eldest sister, and it was time for her uh, high school prom. And she'd already had all the plans ar ar arranged, and she had a date and everything 
was, was set to go, and my father told her, you can't go. And there was conflict in our house because, you know, of course, my sister's a teenager, she wants to go. And, you know, they'd already made, gave permission. This other young man had agreed. Everyone was, my father just seemed very arbitrary. And he said, I don't feel right about you going. Hmm. And um, she was very upset. My mother was, you know, of course, trying to, you know, make things work out. But just said, let's listen to your father. You're not going to go. And, you know, of course, she was very disappointed it didn't go. But it turned out that evening at this high school prom, there was a terrible tragedy that happened um, while they were letting go of the balloons in the final dance to, you know, celebrate the, the graduation. A pipe loosed from the ceiling, fell and struck a girl, and she died. Mm. And it was tragic, but I remember being younger and thinking that, oh, my God, my dad was, was, it, was it was a good thing he didn't let my sister go because maybe that could have been her, you know, or maybe she wouldn't have come home. And it didn't seem like it was the smart thing because we'd already like prepared for this. But in the wisdom and, you know, it, it just seemed as though, wow, my dad knew something or God told him something or showed him something. Mm. And it made us think and, and, and made me realize that not because you've already planned things out do you have to always follow through. Mm, if there's true. ever a moment where the Holy Spirit impresses upon you that you don't have to go the next step, it's okay if others think you're crazy or you think you've wasted your money or all your plans fall through, but that never left me. I've never forgotten that. Mm. And I'm, I'm grateful for that because sometimes wisdom comes at that last moment where mm. God just wants to step, you know, just step in and, and prevent something from happening. Um, but I think that we all learn from that. And I thank God that my mm. father, you know, we thought he was a bad guy for, you know, ruining my sister's big night. Right. But it turned out that, um, thank God that he said what was not the, what we all wanted to hear. And I'm glad I still have my big, I believe I still have my eldest sister because my father said what wasn't the popular thing and, and she stayed home that night. We, was your father uh, a Christian, a praying yes, man? Okay, yes. so I think that's a really important yes. thing too. It wasn't just that he'd had one too many things of the wrong thing to drink and he was no. just acting irrational. Mm -hmm. that, that, that the reference point, even though it was difficult, was my father loves God yep. and my father listens to God and my father yes. loves me. Mm -hmm. And I don't like what he's saying right now, mm -hmm. yeah. but uh, we learn to trust yeah. because a per we, we sense a person listen to God. Uh, someone else want to share a story? Joshua. One of the biggest inspirations in my life that I'm coming to now realize are the men of my church. So having them to, in that, in a sense, father role, although I have my own father who I love, uh -huh. <laughs> those men in my church, they, they guide me spiritually. They've given me... Uh, personal testimonies of theirs um, concerning things such as marriage, uh, life in general, just all different topics. And I learn from them and I take that wisdom and I, I, excuse me, I take that knowledge and then I apply it to my life and convert it to wisdom. And it's been a tremendous help in my life. I mean, some amazing testimonies. And I wish I could share some of them now, but uh, one recently that it just hit me hard in a magnificent way was that of a friend of mine. He told me about how he got married and the fact that he took a big leap of faith in marrying his wife because she was in Nigeria and he was in America and he wasn't sure if he was going to be able to bring her to the US. But he took a leap of faith, he went over and he married her and even before he got on the plane to see her, she was granted um, the ability to come to the U.S. and from there she ended up getting her green card and staying in this country. So it was just hearing that story and, and thinking to myself, wow, I need to not only uh, listen to God, but I need to act on what he tells me. Mm. Now let me ask a question of the rest of the group about Joshua's testimony. What is it about those men in the church that has earned his confidence. How did they earn his confidence? Because you could, we talked about the difference between wise counselors and foolish counselors, right? What, what was it that he saw, and maybe he'll need to answer for us, what do you think he saw that caused him to say, I can trust uh, the wisdom that comes from, from these men at my church? Personal example. Personal oh, example? Yeah. It, of a godly, um, godly example that he could trust and say, you're following God, I've, I'm comfortable following you. So if I'm living poorly, even if I give good counsel, it's hard to know whether you should believe it or not, right? Yeah. No? 
Kenneth, what do you think? Why, 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 why do you think he was led to have confidence in these men? I think men? they have showed him a very living example. Yes. And they were not just telling him. So he could see that what they were saying was actually how they were living their life in accordance with the scriptures. Now let's ask if that's true. Joshua, <laughs> you, you said these men, and I'm assuming it's not like hundreds of them, but oh, may, no. maybe a few, few men. Say about a good four. Four men, okay. <laughs> really earned your confidence. How, how, did, how did that happen that now you, you really trust the wisdom isn't just their human wisdom, but something that, that they're receiving from God and sharing with you? Because in their actions, in their words, even in their daily activities outside of the church, I could tell that they were men of God who purposed in their mind that they were going mm -hmm. to follow him and trust him and walk in his ways. And so then you trust them in the decisions for your life. Well, I listen. You listen? Yes. Yeah. And so yeah. from that point, I can act on it or not. But most times, yeah, I don't have any issues with it. Well, this wise guy. Listen to counsel, receive instruction that you may be wise, right? Yeah. Timothel. I think he also saw the happiness that was in these people's lives. Okay. You know, they have this true sense of joy. And he also wants that. You know, and we all want that. We all want to be happy all the time and joyous, even though it's not always like that. And he sees that these people are men of God and... Hearing their experiences really helps him to decide that he can trust God to become happy eventually. So, so just a, a, a living uh, example. Right, a living example. A, a, right. a living example. Uh, we we got time for one more, uh, Jennifer, and and maybe Squeeze and Kenneth too. Sure. These these are these are practical because, and I yeah. think maybe some people watching say, "Oh, I wish I could find a person like that," yeah. mm. and and my my response would be, "Pray." Yes. Pray that God will lead you to such a, a, a counselor who's connected with God mm -hmm. and who cares about you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, receive wisdom and act upon it. Who, who comes to your mind, Jennifer? So I would think, for me, it would just have to be a, 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 a lot of people because I think different people have wisdom in different areas. So if I know of someone and they have a really happy mm -hmm. relationship, that might be a good person for me to speak with about relationship. If I know someone... And they're, um, you know, an outstanding person and a witness at their work. I might talk to them about professional things or someone okay. who's really good at finances. So I think a lot of times, you know, maybe instead of just looking for one person for everything. Like the, the, like the perfect. Yeah, you can, you can identify folks who have strengths in different areas and talk to an abundant of people and seek counsel in that so, way. So uh, in a multitude of counselors... Safety. There is safety. That's in the Proverbs chapter 11, mm -hmm. right? right? But I like what you're saying there. Now, what, just so that we don't assume anything, what do all of those people have in common? You're saying they have wisdom in different areas of life, but what do they all have in common? Yes. A relationship with God. Okay. Amen. So they have a relationship with God, yes. and they also care about you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right? Sure. And so those, that, that's kind of the common denominator. Yes. Kenneth? Yeah. For me, it's two women. Um, one is my mother-in-law. And then the other one is the woman who gave me the marriage counsel. And they've been a source of inspiration to me. Your mother-in-law, yeah. your wife's mother, yes. and the person who gave marriage counsel to you. Yeah. What um, was it about their, them uh, or their counsel that impacted What I've impacted seen is you? they are very prayerful. Okay. And they are women of their word. You know, they, are, they don't say this and then live a different lifestyle. And they've both been married for over 40 years. No. So they have a track record, yes. kind of like the men. <laughs> yeah. And it has really helped me in my young marriage. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, let's get to a, a closing testimony here. Somebody share, in your life, you, you sought to follow God's wisdom, and, uh, and you were blessed. Andrea, you have a story to share. Sure. Um, a couple years ago, I was reading through the book of Mark, and there's a part in there where Jesus um, is talking about forgiveness and how if you want to be forgiven, then you, you need to, to forgive, offer that as well. And I had a couple people definitely in my mind that I was like, oh, I need to forgive them. But it was really hard, but it was just very clear. And so I was like, man, if I can follow through with this, this is what I need to do. And so they were far away, so I had to email. Um, and I knew whatever the response was, I knew I did my part. Um, thankfully, the response was positive, but I was just very thankful that I had the opportunity and I was able to follow through and just so directly tied to a text. Um, yeah. So you heard yeah. the wisdom from God, you acted upon it, and, and who was blessed? I was. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, I can't be responsible about how everyone else responds, right? Mm -hmm. but, right? But I can choose what I'm going to do. Someone else, uh, 
you, you sought to act upon wisdom God gave and, and blessings came. Uh, yeah, Timothy. Um, in the past, I, was a, I had a bit of a short temper problem. And um, my mother... was a bit of a short temper. <laughs> <a little, laughs> <a little bit. laughs> and my mother would always tell me, you know, he who is slow to wrath conquers yeah. nation, nation or something like that. Yeah. And I would never follow that, 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 that advice at all. I'd always get angry and it would always cause the other person to get angry and it just becomes this clashing thing that never yes. is resolved. And one day I decided, you know, I'm going to try it. And someone was, I don't, know, I don't know what exact situation it was, but someone was just flaring up at me and I just decided I'm going to say, okay, that's cool, man, everything's okay. And it just, it just gets squashed before yeah. everything... Yeah, before the cycle's it, broken right there. It's just there. broken right there and I feel so much better at peace. And so Amen. it's it's wisdom that I I'm glad I've been following, not all the time, but you know I try. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he you know? who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Yeah. Uh -huh. So so you got that wisdom that your mother gave you at first. You're like no 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 no, yeah. but finally uh, I'm going to act upon that. And and uh, who was blessed? I was blessed. You were blessed, huh? Yeah. Maybe the other person too. The other person also, yeah. the both of us. We don't know. Yeah, yeah. good, practical, Gary. Last um, minute. Yeah. In college, you know, college student have have a computer program due Friday night, midnight, and I'm I, I skip my classes working on this project, and it's coming down to sunset. And you know, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Wisdom from God. This is God's special day. And I, my friends were like, "Man, aren't you going to do this? You need to keep on working. It's not completely done." And I. I turned it in and I said, God, I'm turning this in. Whatever I get on it, I get on it. Monday, I got like a B on the project. My friends who stayed all night, they got lower grades. And I was like, God, this was not me at all. And <laughs> the blessing wasn't just the grade, was it? No. no. What was the blessing? A witness to my friends. Yeah, and? Yeah. And a built trust. Yeah. The peace that passes understanding. <laughs> and, you know, uh, I just want to speak to you as we close. This, this is practical. We're, we're talking about getting frustrated or about overdue assignments. And the wisdom that comes from God that says, listen to my wisdom. Trust me. Know that your acceptance is not based on how you perform, but on how much I love you. Receive that wisdom. Act upon it and be blessed. I want to pray that that we'll have the courage to do that. Let's pray. Lord, as we hear wisdom in the Proverbs, as we see the wisdom most fully revealed in the life and the teachings of Jesus, help us to accept, to receive that wisdom and to act upon it, not only for our own blessing, but for the blessing of those around us. We pray, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us on this journey. The book of Proverbs, practical wisdom that can bless your life and bless the lives of those around you. Take what you've learned today and live it. <laughs>